And what one patient who came out to her, she was a nurse. And she flat out, she said, hey, listen, I mean, the way I run, the way I take care of my family is um, I, I do go to the medical doctor, you know, when I'm sick and run down and when I have a medical crisis or an emergency or when I'm, quote, sick, I heard terminologies. And she said, but if I want to promote health, if I want to promote well-being, that's why I go to the chiropractor. And I said, well, how many times do you go to the chiropractor in a year? Well, I go every two weeks. How many times do you go to the medical doctor? And she says, well, because I go to the chiropractor every two weeks, I might go to the medical doctor every couple that's of great. years. Well, hello, everybody. Dr. Ron Oberstein, president of Life Chiropractic College West, and I'm joined for this Life by Life West. This is something I've been, Dr. Mary and I, welcome, Dr. Mary. It's great, great to see you. Okay. We're in two separate areas, and it's great to see her. And we've got with us Dr. BJ Hardick. So, BJ, welcome. Welcome to the Life by Life West webcast with Dr. Mary and myself. We're going by Mary, Ron, and BJ. I love it. I'm thrilled to be here. I've, I've been grateful to have been in a position to support Life West for a long time. And I know we've been trying to set this up for almost as long. So it's <laughs> good. Exactly. And, and, and listen, we've been trying to put this, this show together literally, what, like six months or five months? Yeah, six months or a year or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get, you know, just to get the times that we can be together. So we're thrilled to have you. For our audience, let me just give you a little bit of rundown on uh, Dr. BJ. Uh, dual citizen, Canadian and American. Where were you born? Were you born in the U.S. or Canada? I was, I was born in Canada. Too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But his mom is American, Lynn, and that's where he gets everything from. And his father, <laughs> Canadian, you know, and, and BJ's a Cairo kid, uh, second generation chiropractor. Uh, you know, father is Dr. Cliff Hardick. Uh, BJ practices as an office at a family practice in London, Ontario, or right outside London or you know, right around that area. So, uh, you know, he can go out to dinner in London any night that he wants to and, and make that happen and make us all jealous. Um, he's a LifeU grad, graduated in 2001, uh, le has lectured all over the world. The coolest thing is that he's authored three books. Uh, the most recent one and probably the, the biggest seller is Align Your Health. Uh, we might get into that. We'll for sure have where to buy it, you know, it'll be on the bottom that, that people can get into that. Um, but th the truth is, is like, he's just really a keeper of chiropractic and he's doing so much great things. He's mentored students and mentored young chiropractors for many, many years. And all the things that you've done, BJ, we just so appreciate because, you know, what you're bringing to the table is what's needed these days, right? You know, you're like in that middle road, you know, like 21 years in practice, you know, to Mary and I and your father, you're still a youngster, but to others looking at you, wow, 20 years, you reached that, you know, you went over that pinnacle and yet you play both sides because, you know, you can relate to the, to the, to the newer chiropractors coming out and also sit at the table with, you know, the old uh, folks like me and Mary, right? So it's just so cool to have you. So I'm I'm thrilled. Let's let's just dive into it. I'm I could go on and on. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, oh. I, I will say that when I had my 20th anniversary in practice and balloons showed up for my mom because it was in practice for 20 years, I thought back to when I had uh, signed off on a memory book for a chiropractor who had been in practice for 20 years. And I was in my teenage years at this time, and this was actually Willie Kindred at Parker Seminars. I don't know if you ever knew Willie from Arizona, but I, I wrote him this letter about how grateful we were all were that he was practicing for 20 years. And I thought he was like, I, I thought he was like George Washington or something. <laughs> cool, you know? And then I thought, wait, he was just a kid. He was just this okay. young guy in his 40s. But I thought he was this, this grandfather of the profession. So <laughs> got a long way to go. You know, my father's been in practice for 52 years now. My uncle uh, retired after 40 years. Uh, so, I, and my father still comes into this day, you know, three hours a week. Um, probably having seen more patients than anybody else I know who's alive, you know, so... I, I really can't imagine ever wanting to not work with chiropractic. <laughs> and I don't know who we are, Mary, in that in that you know scenario. <laughs> you know, we certainly aren't aren't George and Martha Washington, but, <laughs> but, but we're we're somewhere along that. BJ, talk to us and tell us, like you know, I mean, obviously you're a chiro kid, but not every chiro kid jumps into chiropractic. You know, uh, mm -hmm. what what inspired you to be a chiropractor? You know, I believe that my family wanted to give me the best opportunity to see and understand chiropractic, but I was never pushed. 
So I started working in the office really to have a part-time job after school. There was no pressure to become a chiropractor, although my dad did give me every opportunity to see speakers, go to Parker seminars, go to DE when I was a kid. I started in the office and I was only in the office for uh, less than a year uh, before I started to see these life transformations in people. And of course, you know, back then as well, if I subtract 30 years off my life, you know, people got better quicker back then. They really, really did. You know, I, I think of all the testimonials that we wrote of all the kids coming to the office um, with allergies, digestive issues. I could go on. A lot of these things are complicated by today's modern world. And that's why I've taken such an interest in lifestyle and nutrition. You know, but back, you know, 30 years ago, we didn't have toxic food and food colorings and all the pollutants and poisons. You know, the reality is these kids would come in um, for the sole purpose of having their spine assessed so that their body could heal itself as best as it possibly could. And people got better. And it was really sitting out there at the front counter in this office where I am right now, seeing people get well, when people would say, oh, you must be learning the ropes. And I would say, no, I'm not learning the ropes. I don't want to be a chiropractor. You know, but after seeing patient after patient get so well, I said, this stuff is absolutely something that I you know, must commit my life to. Yeah. You know, one of the early ones I recall back in those days was a little youngster who was really um, the first eye-opener to what chiropractic could do and how quickly. It was a four-year-old boy who came in who had never been checked. Mom lived out of town, wanted to bring this youngster in, but it just never really worked. Finally, she finally brought him in to get checked with massive, massive constipation. And the kid was having one bowel within a week. And sure enough, he had his first adjustment. I was at the front counter when I was 14 years old. And I remember after his first adjustment, he goes out into the front waiting room and he's, he's, he's buckling over in pain because he'd had his lumbar spine adjusted and instantly things started to work. And he's all seized up. And I'm a young child, I'm a young teenager. I'm freaking out thinking, dad, what did you do to this kid? Um, sure enough, my dad calls the family that night. Hey, how's you? And, and of course, my dad said, no, his body is starting to work better now. And of course, I won't get into the gruesome details, but we call <laughs> him. The constipation had been massively relieved by the time the child got home. Problem never came back again. Yeah. You know, so those are the types of things that I was introduced to at a very, very young age. And I just knew that everybody needed a chiropractor. You know, it just made sense to me that even though my family doctor was my next door neighbor, I just knew that everyone would be better off if they had regular chiropractic care throughout their lifetime. Yeah. That's so cool. It's, I think it's so cool that you had your own experience of that. Yeah. Um, I have a question. So when you told, so was, were you 14 when you said I'm going to be a chiropractor or did it take a couple more years that you 14, 15, 16, somewhere in there. I mean, I, I think, you know, you guys have kids. Yeah. Um, I probably resisted it for a while. Um, but it, but it, it was going to seminars, being introduced to people like Jim Parker, Sid William, John D. Martini. If you're watching the video, they're all on this ball right here because they really are my heroes in life. And, and it, it, was, it was, you know, see, and it was, it was not only seeing that people's lives could be changed, but I think early on, I was blessed with uh, the ability to see that people need this philosophy in their life, right? So I, I knew that in a chiropractic family that we thought differently, you know, we didn't think that life was an accident. We knew that the body always was doing everything it could to save its own life. We knew that symptoms were just a sign, a symptom wasn't a disease. I mean, this was the way that I was raised. And something struck, you know, listening to speakers as a young child, just realizing that people need that philosophy more than anything, you know, and beyond the different methods and the techniques and what somebody does in their office, to me, it always came down to preserving that philosophy. So I think that's what really inspired me to, of course, you know, go to university, um, get a degree that could be getting me to chiropractic college. I got a degree that could also have a, you know, a back door shut. I decided to do something different. Um, but then by 1997, uh, made it to life, and uh, there was obviously no turning around at that point. Okay. That's great. It's beautiful. It. So, so you talk about, you know, wow, there's a lot there. I know. I, I, want, I don't know. I'm not going to rewind it. I want to. I want to ask you. Yeah. You know, because we talked. You just talked about chiropractic, and you talked about lifestyle. Yeah. You know, and when we talk about that kind of, you know obviously it has to be, it has to be incorporated. And what I heard you say was that back then, right. People got well quicker. They absolutely did. And, and then the other piece I heard you say was it, the toxins, you know, the, you know, the trauma, you know, the, the three T's, right. Yeah, um, yeah. But the toxins was the, well, it, you know, is, is more of what's affecting our bodies these days. Not to say that you know, others aren't right. Not to say that yeah. traumas and you know, everything else aren't, but you know, how do you incorporate that 
You know, that, that if you have that knowledge, how do you incorporate that in your practice? You know, like, you know, because, you know, you practice with principle, right? You know, and you guys, you know, I know that you just adjust in the office, right? You know, but, and, but how do you incorporate that? Not just in the, in practice, but in your life also, because you got to walk your talk. Well, there is no question that it starts with a philosophical understanding for me and for our patients, right? And it obviously starts with taking care of someone from the inside out first. So again, if I ever see any stress or distress in the nervous system as a result of spinal subluxation, I always start with chiropractic. Um, I mean, because at the end of the day, I realize there's a lot of avenues that people can go to improve the nutrition, to improve their health, to get fit. And quite frankly, there's a lot of avenues that people are already attending that aren't getting them the results because chiropractic, most of the time, is that missing link. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do remember, uh, you know, early on, even before I got into a lot of nutrition myself, you know, I remember the patients that came in who, um, you know, talked about their blood sugar. And of course, I use Canadian numbers, Ron. You have different numbers there. You use a different system that the rest of the world doesn't use. Yeah. And I remember my patients who had high blood sugar, which was, I'll just say, double what it should be, you know starting to get adjusted and then coming in after three or four adjustments and saying, wow, my blood sugar has gone from in Canadian numbers, 11 down to five, and then it never goes back up again, right? I also remember when I started teaching seminars to the community, because really I just said, man, nobody's teaching this stuff. And you know, kind of the Canadian dietary guidelines don't make a lot of sense. They're very heavily influenced by lobbyists and they're kind of the traditional model that's not working for people. I remember bringing up testimonials at the seminars of people whose um, cholesterol was improving, their blood pressure was improving. And I would beg, and I would beg these patients to tell us what they had done differently in their life. And they said, well, I haven't changed anything in my life, but I've just been going to you right now. That didn't mean that I didn't want them to change what they were doing in their life because I knew there were some bad habits there, but I would still say that first and foremost, it has always come down to that um, deep understanding that the body is always doing everything it can to save its own life. The body is always aiming to heal itself, and we need to re- we need two things to heal. We need no interference, and we need time, right? But the reality is, there can be interference structurally in the body, but there can also be interference chemically. And even in my own sense, the, the first thing I would say, guys, is you know, if, if chiropractors out there have an interest in nutrition and well-being, go apply it. If they don't, that's okay too, because chiropractic works whether you bring those principles in. It happens to be that. I grew up getting adjusted my entire life. And of course, I ran into, you know, gastrointestinal issues and energy issues when I was about 30 years old. And it was through my own exploration, realizing that you know, I probably hadn't eaten well through college and in my early years, and I needed to improve those things. I wanted my patients to understand what I had gone through. And of course, my experience was realizing that certainly I had looked after the physical structural interference by having a healthy spine, by doing my home care, by looking at all these different chiropractic techniques. Um, But I always found in the nutritional world that there was a little bit of a breakdown because we're always talking about what the body was missing. You know, you run this panel, oh, you were missing zinc, you were missing magnesium. And of course, I was always taught philosophically, um, the body is given everything it needs, right? You know, we need to just remove interference. So it was only once I looked at a different panel of maybe functional medicine tests, which wasn't so much trying to identify, you know, what's DJ's body missing, but where's the interference, right? Maybe what toxicants mm-hmm. have my body, and of course we could talk about glyphosate, we could talk about mercury, we can talk about all those things. But yeah, the reality is I, was, I had been exposed to a lot of these elements, right? So when I started looking at how my body can rid itself of a lot of the environmental pollutants, so that again, my body could do what it was designed to do, provided there was no interference, um, that's really where this notion of lifestyle and then traditional chiropractic principles came together, made perfect sense to me. But I did realize, you know, for people that were not getting as well in 2004 as they did in 1992. Right. But, but PJ, that, look at those things. That, that's a good point. And, you know, Mary, we've talked about this how many times, you know, like, like when people come in and they say, oh, well, can you help us with our diet, you know, or that kind of thing. And we're not experts in that. Right. You know, I mean, you know, we could say drink more water. You, I mean, you're much more of an expert than, than, than we would be, right? You know, drink more water, watch your sugar intake, you know, things like that. But the bottom line is, is like, you know, we can't be putting premium formula, you know, I'm, I'm talking about like formula race car gasoline, which is like, you know, uberly $50 a, a gallon kind of a thing or whatever you guys use liters of for, you know, uh, it's, you know, you can't put it into a car that's not functioning well. 
And, and so what you talk about is so true is that the basic structure, you know, the, the, the entity needs to be functioning at a high level. Otherwise, we're just, what do we used to say, Mary? We're just, it's this expensive urine, right? Even yeah. anything nutritionally, you know, around that. But that's not saying it's bad, right? But uh, yeah. But we're, we're, again, what I what I what I what I tell patients is that again, you aren't what you eat; you are what you assimilate, right? You need a properly functioning body in order to right. assimilate those things. You know, apples, berries do not make a person person healthy. They can support a healthy functioning body. Yeah. You know, and what's interesting is, you know, many years ago, I won't name names because I don't have the person's permission, but I sat with a researcher who was talking about some of the research that was being done in chiropractic as related to low back pain. I mean, talk about the lowest hanging fruit of research. <laughs> you know what the outcome is going to show, but very easy to, I'm sure you see this at the institutional level, very easy to get funded, very easy to get published, like chiropractic about low back pain. And this person was saying that when they were assessing people's outcomes in this low back pain study, it wasn't always the musculoskeletal issues that cleared up first. When people started getting adjusted, they would digest their food better. They would sleep better, which is a metabolic and physical process, right. right? Their minds would be clearer. So, so clearly there is an impact on the autonomic nervous system when people get adjusted. And when I look at it from then incorporating lifestyle, we say, if, if, that, if that we know is going to occur when we remove stress from the spine, instead of just throwing vitamins and nutrients at a body that's not working properly, the best thing someone can do is get their body structurally sound because as we say, structure influences function right. and then support the body right. with lifestyle. Yeah. That's, and you always, said be that's always been my, that's been my philosophy. And, I'm, and I'm, personally, I'm passionate about them both. Yeah. And you said it before, it was about assimilation. Yeah. And that, that's the key because like Ron said, you could be taking all these supplements that are great for your body, but if you're not assimilating them, it's expensive urine. I have a question for you. So um, in your practice, how does that work? Is it like, are you, are you educating your patients daily on this stuff? Do you do workshops? Like how, you know, what does it look like in your practice of you getting this message to your patients? Well, first of all, I think it would be unavoidable for people to come to our practice and know that we highly value it. Sometimes I actually want to make sure people are not intimidated by the fact that, you know, my, you know, if they happen to come in on a Monday morning, which is only three hours I can get out of my father at this point, <laughs> if they come in and here's this, you know, 75 year old, um, you know, person who is an incredible health, you know, super fit, um, you know, then plus, you know, I, you know, you come to my office and, you know, here's, here's the couple books that I've written. And plus we have a couple of holistic nutritionists that are on staff. Um, the first thing I would say is I realize that most people aren't really going to the chiropractor um, wanting lifestyle. They're probably going to the chiropractor for whatever reason they looked at the chiropractor on Google, right? right. Um, but I will say there is, um, I think there's a community sense, there's a cultural sense where, where I think our patients know that we want to look up to the whole person. Um, I, I, I would also say, I've seen more and more that um, patients haven't been able to um, um, grasp those aspects of preventative health through the conventional medical system, right? So I think for many people, when they come to us, they say, wow, here's a place that um, isn't going to force something upon me. Um, but if I need resources that make a little bit more sense in terms of how to raise my family, um, they, they're going to get it from the chiropractor. Um, I remember we took some patients out to dinner um, a few years ago, just some of our best patients to you know, kind of love on them and thank them for their commitment to their care. And we took a nurse, to, well, one patient who came out to dinner, she was a nurse. And she flat out, she said, hey, listen, I mean, the way I run, the way I take care of my family is, um, I, I do go to the medical doctor, you know, when I'm sick and run down and when I have a medical crisis or an emergency or when I'm, quote, sick, I heard terminologies. And she said, but if I want to promote health, if I want to promote well-being, that's why I go to the chiropractor. And I said, well, how many times do you go to the chiropractor in a year? Well, I go every two weeks. How many times do you go to the medical doctor? She says, well, because I go to the chiropractor every two weeks, I might go to the medical doctor every couple that's of great. years. Yeah. Right. So, so one thing, there's a, there's a cultural element that's unavoidable because it's something that we're passionate about. Um, I don't expect that of any, of any and all chiropractors. Um, but I would say, you know, I, I really want to make sure that we give the opportunity for our patients to incorporate this chiropractic lifestyle as best as possible. You know, I, I make sure we can sit down with somebody a month in and have one of our two staff that went to, to school for nutrition, you know, understand the way um, we think about health and well-being in terms of no interference, um, giving the body um, the basic elements that we're blessed with. Um, you know, we would obviously host workshops and programs, you know, prior to COVID when I um, could put people in a room together. Now I can do that without you know, going to jail or something. Well, you know, 
we, we used to do, you know, one workshop a month on, you know, detoxification, nutrition, sleep, right. water, all these elements. Um, but I, I, it's always been critical to me that, that, that I um, don't turn that into a uh, mechanical talk, but it's still a vitalistic talk. So people understand that this is still through a chiropractic lens that the body is self-healing. It is self-regulating. Right. remove interference, yeah. allow for the proper element of time and the body is designed to heal. So, you know, it's interesting. You, you, you t- I love what you're saying. And I'm, I'm a leadership line that I did a lot. You know, the, I had a wonderful friend of, of Mary and mine, Dr. Fred D. Domenico, and Fred's been in practice 30, whatever, or, you know, I was coaching and doing a bunch of stuff. His message was very similar. It was really interesting. It was, you know, chiropractors try to change people's minds on health, you know, and get them into the chiropractic fold and all. And to change someone's mind takes a lot of work. And his whole thing is change their lifestyle. If you can change their lifestyle and have them actually make a shift in their lifestyle, they're automatically in chiropractic, right? Because they're not interested. I used to tell people this too. Mary used to say this all the time, you know, I mean, people tell me to get to our health class, right? You know, uh, well, I don't need what I need to come to your health class for. Yeah, I, I'm coming to see you, right? You're my person. I, if my <laughs> dentist said come and listen about 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 you know dental hygiene, I'd say I don't need to do that. I, I go to you for that, right? You know, that's what, that's what I go to my dentist. But it's really about lifestyle, right? And it's a, yeah. about being able to change that, and that's what you were touching on, you know. And I think it's a key, it's a critical thing that we have to be able to take a look at every chiropractor. How do we change somebody's lifestyle? Doesn't mean they have to change their diet. Doesn't mean exercise might be part of that. Of course, it's chiropractic, but it's at, at, when they adopt chiropractic into their lifestyle, right? Yeah. They're with you forever. People don't switch their lifestyles, you know? I mean, it's just showing whether their lifestyle is working for them or not. But we always focus on the health aspect. And it was really interesting. You just, and that's what you're, that's what I was hearing. Yeah. And well, I think people. And, and again, it, it's, it's about, you know, for patients and for the community when, when somebody becomes um, a committed habit, right? So I don't, I don't really get into, you know, mindset coaching for, for, for people. There's some people that are very good at that. Um, I'm not um, a Tony Robbins guy necessarily when it comes to, you know, frameworking and goal setting. I've seen you walking on fire. What are you talking about? I'm teasing. <laughs> I love it all. It's just really not my element right now, you know, uh, but, I, but I will say, I will say there's no question that when people can embrace health habits on a regular basis, um, that, um, that, that, the, that the end result is obviously a healthier person. So we, yeah. we commit to a habit, whether we're doing it perfectly or not, we're going to have a better outcome long term. Um, and I would say, you know, that's where, you know, I think as we position chiropractic in the future, you know, my, my perspective, you know, communicating chiropractic to somebody who might want to know what I do, I always emphasize that most of my practice would be patients that would, you know, come to me to maintain good spinal health every two to three weeks. The reality is we do see a number of people who have gone years without chiropractic care um, or sometimes never had chiropractic care that have to make up for some of that missed time. We come a lot when they first get started, um, but the goal and even the framework of how we set up our office is to always make it easy for people to integrate chiropractic. Right. Life right. Term, you know? So I, I know, BG, that Life West, you know, we're going to be carrying your book, right, Align Your Health, and we're very excited to have it. And thank you for thank you. including us with that, because I really want our students to have that. Before we sign off, I, I give us like, th- you know, three ways or whatever you want to call it. How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you work to allow somebody, because we don't want to change their mindset, their lifestyle, right? They have to change that. But we have to be able to facilitate it on some level, right? To allow them to choose whether it's right or not. Give us a few tips on how you do that just in a, in, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, you know, I think right now, and I'm, I'm still working on this myself, I feel like there are so many different ways that people absorb and take in and learn information. You know, so, I mean, you know, obviously some people are visual, some people are auditory, some people they have to, you know, you know get um, more kinesthetic with things. You know, so this is why I've always looked at multiple ways people can experience this. And again, now that means... There's social media, there's newsletters, there's the visuals that are in the office. Some people are traditional, they still want that, that newsletter. Some people need, they need the touch, um, they need the touch point to come from the doctor, right? Sometimes it's having just a variety of staff members who can who can associate with patients differently. So I really think that um, you know, Jimmy Parker used to show the science of teleology, right? That you're not going, you know, he used to, and it, of course it came from concept therapy, I believe. Right. 
but he would always talk about one person to another that you want to catch all people, but it's easy to miss that one in the middle. You know, I think when we're very passionate about what we do, we want to miss no one, right? Um, but we've known for 50 or 100 years through Concept Therapy and Parker that you can't catch everyone. So I just want to work constantly just saying, what's my, what's my end goal for my community? My end goal for my community is that people would be healthier. Um, I think I, I know, and I'm very convicted, that part of that is they would get adjustments on a regular basis. They would eat better. They would think more with this chiropractic book philosophy um, mm -hmm. than any other philosophy. And I want to have as many different avenues for people to be able to grasp that as possible, especially in a world where people absorb information so differently. So it's, and, and it just takes an ongoing commitment to keep striving to say, you know, that one person that I'm missing, how can I work a little bit better to make sure that I miss as few people as possible in my life? Yeah. Well, and I'm sure there's people who walk in your office just, just by being around you and knowing you, especially seeing your dad being at the age he's at, he's high energy, he's healthy. I think that alone would be an inspiration to people just walking in and be, regardless of what you even say to them is just like, I want what you have. This is this picture of health. And I mean, at that point, it's probably judging from the outside yeah, because they don't know what you're like on the inside, but like, that's pretty inspiring. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you inspire a lot of your patients just by like, you know, I want what you have. I want well, better health. I, I, yeah, and, and I, would, I would also say, I would also say, it all comes down to, you know, what is your outbound message, right? So if my outbound message is strictly about acute management of symptoms and issues, um, that is, you know, putting out fires in all aspects of life. And really, to me, I'd love to help somebody out if they just want to put out a couple short-term fires. Um, but I, I know that you don't get results like my father or these other people who have been health legends because they just put out fires their entire life. Right. Right. So I want, I want a message that, that helps them understand if you need to put it a fire, I'm going to be the best person I possibly can to put it a fire. But I know we're not going to have as many fires to put out if we take care of ourselves and right. do that forest management for a lifetime. And I think, you know, the reality is people understand that, you know, um, if I go back, even when I started in practice, when people used to, you know, look at the problem and say, can you fix me? Yeah, people meant, you know, can you get rid of my headache? Can you get rid of my static? You know, now if people use that word fix, they say, you know, can you help me restore my body? to its natural states that my body can heal itself. So we have come a long way yeah. in that regard, I would say. Absolutely. I agree. Absolutely. Hey, we've reached that time, man. That was quick. <laughs> that, <laughs> was quick. that was fast. I mean, you know, but BJ, listen, <laughs> listen, we always ask our guests on, on our Life by Life West episodes, we always ask them two questions, yeah. right? We want you to answer it, whatever innately hits you. Yeah. 30 seconds or less, but whatever innately hits you. Um, and then uh, we're going to ask you two, and then we'll kind of close up the show. But uh, Mary, you want to do the first? I'll do the first one. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So knowing what you know now with all your years of wisdom, if you could go back and speak to BJ, who's just starting first quarter at Life University, what advice would you give him? Have a very very open mind to the multitude of techniques and methods that approach within our profession and know that we're not done learning more about how we can help people. You know, I remember uh, Linda Mullen, uh, the Gonstead instructor at Life, said when I was in about 10th quarter, she said somebody was giving a testimonial about somebody receiving a technique much different than Gonstead technique. She said, I have no explanation, but I recognize that there's more than one access to the nervous system, yeah. right? So, you know, I, I think um, I probably got a little too restricted when I was at life because I just fell in love with the tradition and the philosophy. And I just wanted to study upper cervical technique uh, because that's, that was my, I'm only named after BJ Palmer, right? right. <laughs> uh, um, um, but, but again, when I, when I even look at like nutrition, for instance, I mean, here it is something that I'm very passionate about. I sat at the back of the room because I thought, hey, you know, if my patients can just have a perfectly aligned upper cervical spine, um, that bacon will, that broccoli will turn into bacon. It's basically my, you know, John Hoffman philosophy. <laughs> so have an open mind to what's out there and know that we're, we're not done learning about better ways that we can understand why a chiropractor gets the results it gets. Um, and we're not done learning more ways to help people. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. Perfect. I got Good the answer. second question, but before I do that, is it, is BJ Bartlett? Is it no. It's Benjamin Joseph, because I think my parents wanted to give me a little bit of my own identity. 
That's good. They did want to name me after BJ Palmer. My cousin was named after Daniel David Palmer, but he got to go by Danny instead of Dee. I mean, cousins named BJ and Dee would be a little. A little <laughs> That's like, that's like oh, dogs, that's, right? That's like dogs. an axis, you know. Yeah. Well, we have a we have a grandson that's uh, that's Braxton J. So we you, another, another BJ. Both his parents are chiropractors. All right. Second question. Yeah. Thirty seconds or less. Same question, but we're going to put a different twist on it. It's you are who you are right now. Twenty-one years in practice, right? What would you say? to Dr. B.J. Hardick, who just graduated, just graduated, what would you say to him? There is a tremendous world ahead of you. There are tremendous opportunities to make a dent in so many people's lives, but it will go by very quickly. So time is precious and don't assume the time will always be there. Good. If you're if you're blessed with an inspiration, take action on it. Uh, uh, we're in a great profession, but those moments to really serve at your highest capacity, they will go quickly. So don't fool around. I love, I love that. that. I love it. There, that's a diamond right there. Uh, where is something that falls out? Cha-ching! You're right. I mean that. <laughs> we need confetti. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What? What? Wait, now, what do you? What do they do? They hit the golden thing, and all the stuff comes. Oh, out. the golden buzzer. The that's golden buzzer. Oh, I like the golden buzzer. You got yeah. it. You got it. You got it. Thank you, thank you, man. Thank you for being with with Mary and I today. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. You know your your love and your and your passion and your wisdom around chiropractic wisdom. and also just around the human condition, you know, because we weren't just talking chiropractic, we're talking, you know, beyond that. And um, and I just appreciate you so much. I mean, you know, I, I kind of, I hold you as this, our, our next generation who's going to keep the reins going. And I just really want to want to acknowledge you for all the things that you're doing and will do, you know, as we move forward. Um, Mary, I know you feel the same. Uh, yeah. And, and I want to say, too, you've inspired me because we've done a lot of these um, webcasts. And I just love that you've incorporated nutrition and lifestyle habits in your practice. And it's very clear that you've kept chiropractic and the principles of chiropractic like foremost. And I that's the message that I hope people get, because I know sometimes that's not what happens. And people get a little the lines get a little blurred where they feel like nutrition is the most important thing in their office. And so I thank you for, for keeping chiropractic like right up there because you are a chiropractor yeah. and, and kind of just teaching our audience how to do that and stay grounded in the principle. That's what I love yeah. about your message. So, and I love your parents so much. So with you, it's like, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like you're like my nephew, you know, <laughs> they, you know, they, 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 uh, they enjoy the time with you for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, as limited as it, as limited as it can be yeah. with travel and service and, uh, uh, you know, being in multiple parts of the country, you know, but, um, you know, you, you, you guys have just put such incredible leadership into my quest. I know it's kind of, um, I know, you know, the name of the, the blog the podcast is the leadership line, um, but it really comes from the source. So, you know, I look forward to many more years of it. And I thank for all the work that you do. Absolutely. And, and I'm great. And I'm grateful for the people that graduate from Life West, you know, yeah. Um, you know, uh, certainly I've, I've had an opportunity to be on um, 10 campuses. I've spoken on seven of them. I uh, obviously it's, it's natural to play favorites with the ones that you went to school at, you know, but I've always loved my experiences out there. And uh, it's just exciting to see what's already come um, from your leadership and what will come in the future. So thank you both. It's beautiful. You're welcome. And to our audience, we want to thank you. You know, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for, you know, coming back, you know, week after week. We, we drop these every other week, uh, opposite weeks. We drop our, our uh, Life, Life West leadership lines. Um, but these Life by Life Wests are just inspirational. Uh, we're up to that. We're, we're, we've been around 4,000 viewers on these. We're just thrilled that that people are watching them and getting the message that's going out because the message isn't for us. It's for it's for the profession and even more people. So, you know, pass this, pass this out, spread this so that other people can 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 listen to this and be able to hear what uh, what BJ had to share with Mary and I today. 
Um, but thank you. You know, thank you for the commitment that you have to the profession and everything that you're doing to make this world a better place. So uh, we will be making this into a podcast. So you'll be seeing the podcast and uh, you'll be able to go on that and listen to all of our Life by Life West and our Life uh, Life West leadership options, you know, on podcast form. Also, uh, all the things that you saw on the bottom of the screen, uh, you can go to those and be able to, you know, find BJ's book and all the other things that we have. So uh, we love and appreciate you. Until we come back next week, uh, will the three of us will uh, will give you our best and bid you adieu, and just keep loving those people around you and hugging people and letting them know that the power that's within them is greater than they were ever taught or led to believe. So, with that. We'll say goodbye for BJ, for Mary and myself. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.